Yes, please. That was amazing. Let's express some appreciation. That was a Noel. Thank you so much, Linda. Welcome to Grace Presbyterian Church. So glad that you are here. Stacy, you're missing half of your family, aren't you? But you are here on time, okay? So that's good. That's good. Hey, it's so good to be here together in worship on this Sunday before Christmas. Is that not amazing? Are you ready? No, absolutely not. Gulps, please. No, we're not ready. Hey, a reminder that we're actually not going to meet next Sunday. There's going to be this beautiful online service that's available that Justin and Danny and I uh, put together and, and, uh, and, and with people like Doug and Sheila helping us out, of course, because uh, we couldn't do any of that stuff without them. But uh, there's an online service uh, next Sunday uh, instead of here in person. And then, but remember, you're going to be here Christmas Eve, aren't you? And remember what time our services are. We've got a four o'clock and a six o'clock and an eight o'clock and an eleven o'clock. And and you know what? You know what? I would really appreciate if you all, my family's about to walk in late. And and could we just could we just could we just kind of make a big deal about that? Would you all mind joining with me? Oh oh, who is this coming in now? Oh, this looks like a famous ballerina from L.A. You think you can just arrive any time you want, huh? Will you introduce your boyfriend for us, please? All right. This is the boyfriend I've been telling you about. So. <laughs> thank you for that, you all. Thank you. And so 4, 6, 8, and 11 are our services. Uh, 11 o'clock is that very special communion service one. Bonnie's going to be leading us in the music. And, and the 4 o'clock is a wild and crazy kids one with the families and everything. And they're going to be you know, telling the Christmas story. It's really actually just lessons and carols. Uh, but, but it doesn't seem that way. And then the 6 o'clock is when the, when the uh, choir, excuse me, the uh, band will be playing. And the 8 o'clock is when, the, uh, when you all the choir is going to be really focused so i'm really appreciative all these uh linda will be here and it's christmas eve around here is very special so glad about that also listen wednesday is kind of an important day for us as well this week uh at five o'clock we have the blue christmas service it's designed for folks who have kind of gone through a loss in their life or experiencing grief or remembering some a loved one that's passed away and uh, find a kind of a quiet more intimate service where we kind of share and commiserate with one another about some of the grief that we have uh, in our lives. So Blue Christmas, we, we stole that from Elvis. Yes, we did. Uh, if you come to the uh, Blue Christmas service, no, it's not going to be a big depressing thing whatsoever. We're, gonna, we're just going to uh, walk alongside one another as we, as we grieve, though. And so I'd love to have you come to that. 5 o'clock, and it's only a 45-minute service. And then at 6 o'clock, we've, we've designed and put together a wrapping party. So if you uh, bring some of your gifts, bring some of your wrapping material, and come get meet here in the office, and we'll be wrapping presents together and sharing some glee. And uh, if you want to bring something to eat, do that as well. But it's kind of a Christmas wrapping party, okay? Hey, fill out the friendship pads for us, if you will, right here. And uh, let us know you're here today. There's a prayer card inside there if we can be praying for something for you. And also there's a green card in there that if you give online during the offering, uh, if you give online, go ahead and use the, one of those green cards and put that in the offering plate. I think I covered everything that needs to be covered. Can you think of anything else, Justin? I think we're good. Are you glad to be here today? Scripture says, I was glad when they said to me, let us go up to the house of the Lord. I'm glad. Justin's going to be talking about us doing a little leap for joy. This little leap that Elizabeth does and the baby inside her. And I hope by you being here this day that there's a part of you that leaps for joy. Yes, I know there's all these obligations for Christmas and there's all these things coming up. Did I wrap this? All these parties to go to, all, the, all these obligatory things. But I hope today, especially, as you're gathered in worship with one another, as you're listening to a fine sermon, as you're joining together in a song, as we're hearing an anthem from the choir that Matthew wrote, that's a big deal. 
I hope you feel a sense of joy. I hope you feel a part of you inside leap. Gracious God, thank you for this day of worship. Thank you for one another. Hear us as we lift up our worship to you. Let's stand and join together in angels we have heard on high. And you may be seated. Friends, we should just sing that song every Sunday because you all sing that loudly. Oh, it was beautiful. I could hear all your voices. It was gorgeous. Thank you all. I'm going to go ahead and bring up four of our new members today. So Judy and Jim and Phil and Laura, come on down. We've been doing this new member thing here this morning, and we've got four of them here with us right now. We'll get them arranged here for you, wherever you'd like to go. We didn't rehearse this where they're supposed to go. It's a little, <laughs> little duck, duck, goose here going on. So, Okay. On behalf of the session, I present these new members who have been received into the membership of the congregation by transfer of membership, reaffirmation of faith, or baptism. And Doug, I think if you will advance the slide there, good. There we go. That's what I'm supposed to say. Otherwise, I was about to make stuff up, okay? (laughs) I also want to introduce Mary Miller. She has been a member here for a few months, but we've never had the opportunity to introduce her. So we're glad to have her here as well. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called and one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, 
one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. And I'm going to ask you all to stand as we all confess our faith together with our new members this morning, saying, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and buried. He descended into hell. And on the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence, he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And with that, you may be seated. We have professed our faith as one body, so now will you all be a faithful member of this congregation, share in its worship and ministry through your prayers and gifts, your study and service, and so fulfill your calling to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. If so, say, I will with God's help. I will with God's help. And let us pray. God, we are thankful for these new members, for bringing them to us, for bringing us to them, for all of the joys of their gifts, for their personalities, for their energy, for their thoughts, for their heart. We are thankful, oh God. Allow us not only to minister to them, but for us to see you more clearly through them. We pray these things in Christ's name. Amen. Joining together on screen with joy and thanksgiving, we welcome you into Christ's church to share with us in his ministry, for we are all one in Christ. And as they go back to their seats, let's welcome them with a warm applause. We're about to do our grace blessing. So if you are a kid, I want you to join me right up here right now. Come on down. Yeah, see, that's exactly what I'm looking for right here, friends, from all of you, okay? (laughs) So what's about to happen is a grace blessing, but you all are not going to be in here when I read my scripture text today. And as Pastor Dave mentioned earlier, It's all about this joy and this leaping and jumping. So I thought maybe you all could do some leaping and jumping and skipping with me. Can we do that? Can we do that? I know she's pretty excited about it. You all a little less so, okay? I'm with you, really. Inside, I'm with you. Because I get paid, I'm acting like I'm like her, okay? So, right. We're going to jump, so three, two, one, jump, okay? Then I want you to skip, Uh uh-huh, yeah, in my robe, no less, right? We're going to skip some more, right? You all be lucky because you could be doing this instead, okay? Just want to let you know that, okay? And now that we have that energy going through us, I want us to do our grace blessing, okay? So we're going to bless them. And then we're going to have them stand up after and bless us back, okay? So let's do it. Three, two, one. Grace in me. Grace in you. Grace in all of us. In congregation, please stand. Saying, grace in me. Grace in you. And grace in all of us. Kids, you can go to class. Congregation, please pass the peace of Jesus Christ. And if anyone dares, do a little jump or skip, you know?
Cards are over? Next week. You still have how many? Four days. Finals. All finals. My son's uh, teacher up in uh, Helena, he's all, he has the same schedule, she just has Friday off. <laughs> just Friday. It's, it's a good thing that finals don't really count. The Goodmans are coming forward now for our Advent wreath lighting, and as they do that, let us go ahead and think about these particular themes that hit us at, at Advent. I want you to consider these themes, waiting, anticipation, anxiety, anybody know about that? Worry, the hopes and fears of all the years, longing and dreaming for a better life and a better world, all of these subjects, all of these issues, Advent captures all of it. It's a time of telling and retelling the ancient story again, what, that Christ is coming into the world. And as we tell the story, as we light the candles, may the story continue to be passed on from generation to generation, from one candle to the next. From light comes life. The candle is a seed for a larger fire, one that burns with passion, a hope that glows with infant intensity. It is Advent. We know something is coming, a someone who will transform everything. God, bring us Advent love. Join together with me. It shines in the darkness. It sings in the shadows. It will not cower and cannot be contained. It was the hope of the saints, the call of the prophets. It was the fire in the belly of the Baptist and the courage of Mother Mary. Lamp in the window, beacon on the hill, star in the night sky. Love, you lead us home. On this final Sunday of Advent, we light a candle for love. We light a candle for love. May it continue to light our way. Now let us contemplate these Advent themes as we remain seated, and let's join together in O Come, O Come, Emmanuel.
Our scripture text this morning comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, starting in verse 39. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed, For the mighty one has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. And Mary remained with her about three months and then returned to her home. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us, we proclaim Thanks be to God. From generation to generation, we see God in each other. Now, you know what's about to happen right here, friends. Those of you who are around here all the time know what I'm about to ask you to do. I want you to find someone. I want you to lock eyes with them. I mean it. Do it. Find some eyes. Lock them. Nope, some of you are glancing. Lock eyes, do it. Yeah. You didn't know it this morning, but someone's looking at you going, I see God in you. Whoa. I mean, I didn't get up this morning thinking, even though I knew I was preaching the sermon, I'm going to walk in the door and see people and there's God in them, right? I certainly didn't get up in the morning and look in the mirror and think people are going to see God in me. And yet, that's precisely what I want you to believe this morning. That in you is God. That in you is a miracle. In this room right now, there are all kinds of miracles. All kinds of stories, if we really went around the room, of all kinds of ways that you go, I really shouldn't be here in this life. And yet here I am. All kinds of times when something shouldn't have happened and yet something amazing came out of it. All kinds of magic, all kinds of sacred, all kinds of holy, all kinds of supernatural in all of our stories and histories. The thing is, we keep most of those stories bottled up inside of us, don't we? We have those memories. Some of us do believe in them. Others of us kind of, hello? My car is no good with the problem, the engine. 
So I'm here for one court. I pay the court one thousand five hundred. You know how money for come back my home. Okay. Well, I'm going to hand you off here to Jeff right here, okay? And he's going to take you back here. And we, we have some things that can help with that. And Pastor Dave's going to come here with you as well. And absolutely, blessings to you all at this time of the year, for sure. Absolutely. You're good. Thank you. We see God in one another. We see God in these moments right here in the service, right? And I know you're all having a million different thoughts and feelings going through you right now, right? I do too. Take a moment. This is exactly why we have church. This is why we have sermons, right? This is why scripture texts come alive to us because there's these moments that happen in our lives Moments that will happen to us this week where we go, I don't know how I'm supposed to respond to this, right? You have a situation like that where someone comes in, you go, are these people scamming us? Are they scamming me, right? You have this other thought of deep, deep compassion and going, I know there's desperation in the world, right? And there's this other piece that I know we got going on here is that I have people who are trained for that scenario right there, right? And I just look at them and they go and they take care of it in whatever way they end up taking care of it today. They're going to hear those two people's stories and they will respond in whatever way they respond with, okay? Y'all good? Okay, I've seen a lot of nervous faces there, so I just wanted to address it, okay, friends? God is in you and me. There's miracles happening in you and in me if we will but believe it, if we won't cut our bodies off from our brains, right? Because this is the rational side, right? Some of you have a very overactive rational side, right? And I'm glad you do because there's lots of things that's super helpful for, right? But there's also this piece where it gets a little too wild up here and we begin to think there's not miracles happening in our lives and in the world. That we come to a text right here like Luke where there's a whole bunch of miracles that's already happened in this first chapter, it starts out with Zechariah and Elizabeth. Elizabeth is having a geriatric pregnancy. You know that term gets used for 40-year-olds, right? Here in our own world, right? Elizabeth was a lot more advanced than that. Now, a few weeks ago, when I was talking about Mary, we picked out like a 13-year-old in the audience and had them be our example. I'm not picking out any 75-year-old women today, so don't you worry, okay? No big deal. No big deal. We're not going to do that, okay? And I'm not going to ask you all to get up and jump and leap because we had Clara already do that for us this morning, right? Absolutely. But I do want you to pay attention to the miracles here. Elizabeth has this miracle. And then a few verses later, Mary, a virgin with child, miracle. And she steps through Elizabeth's door. And these two miracles literally collide with one another. And there's spark. And there's energy. It's cosmic and yet so intimate and personal. And Mary greets Elizabeth. Now, it doesn't say what she said, but I bet you all can guess what she said, can't you? What would two Jewish women in the first century might say to one another? Does anyone know that word? Shalom. Shalom. Peace be with you. We just passed the peace a little bit ago, didn't we? Passing that shalom to one another, that wholeness, that may it be well with you. May goodness exude your life. May God fill you. 
That word shalom in Hebrew has a million layers that came through hundreds of years of history up to this point, and now two millennia worth of meaning in it. And if you know anything about the Jewish faith, it holds that kind of memory in its words and rituals. It's not just something you say. It's something that you hold inside of yourself and your family and generation to generation. So when you pass a shalom to someone, it's not just you. It's your entire ancestry saying shalom to you and all that has made you who you are. And when she shares this greeting, what happens? This leaping inside of her womb. Now, let's be honest. This is a lot easier for women here in our group this morning to imagine. But men, I want you to imagine having a womb this morning. It's kind of like indigestion, but bigger, okay? And I want you to think about that because I want you to think about the bodily movement here. This is not something that is in our heads. This is a belief that's in our bodies. It's connected to this. All of those wiggly feelings that we've learned how to control as good Presbyterians and sit in our seats, right? This is not that. This is wow. Right? This is a leaping. This is a skipping. This is, it involves my whole self. That's where God resides. Not up here, in here, in our bodies. We feel God in our bones. It's something visceral. It's something corporeal. It's something that's in the flesh. That's why this incarnation thing is so important. That's why these two miracles that have happened in Luke already are so important. They're not just some thing that happened and God changed someone's mind. It's that God changed someone's body. And God wants to transform our bodies in this same way, so that when we greet with this holy greeting of shalom, that this joy comes pouring out, that when you say the divine words to someone, that they also respond with these other divine words. That we respond with the stories of the miracles inside of us and around us and with us. And guess what? When we do that, we're like Elizabeth. We get all giddy inside too. We get all glee filled. We get joy filled. And we begin proclaiming all kinds of goodness. The miracles come pouring out. Mary then exclaims this beautiful, beautiful song where all the powerful people and all the rich people get cut down. Did you hear those words when we were reading through them? Whew. I bet some of you are going, what's Justin going to do with that this morning? I want you to think about this, friends, because as much as God is in you and me, there's so many people that we look at and go, I don't see God. Two people walked up this aisle right here in this service, right? I don't know their situation. I don't know their story. I do know that they lack something, right? And here's Mary's words. Friends, you and I know deep inside of us 
that it is in the lack. It is in the suffering. It's in the oppression. It's in the marginalization. It is in all of these places that are frail, where God can be seen the most. Anyone been on a mission trip ever? Anyone serve in a food bank? Anyone go to someone who you go, they're at the end of the rope? I promise you, at the moments in your life where you feel the most distant from God, those are the people and those are the places where you can go instantly to find the very presence and spirit of God at work. Every time. When I feel the most alone and distant from God, I know that's when I need to reconnect with real people in real situations. People that have been ignored by society people who are hurting, people who have lack. Because when I connect with them, there is the face of God. Every time. Every time. We serve uh, with an organization called New Genesis. It's a men's shelter down in Central Presbyterian Church in downtown Denver. When I am there, you all come, a lot of you come, and you made a meal, and you serve the men, and it's really wonderful. And I sit at the tables with the men, and I hear their stories. And some are pretty wild stories. Some are not exactly church stories, right? And I am the minister, supposed to be ministering to them. And every time I walk away and go, I was ministered to. I felt the presence of God. I encountered a miracle. Friends, you and I have much to share we'll get out of our heads and share our stories of miracle with one another. If you and I will get out of our way and encounter people, people who are suffering and go, oh, the divine has been there all along. If we will but believe that we see God in each other. Amen. Good morning. Traveling. Before the choir sings uh, their anthem for you this morning, I just want to do a quick plug to mention what Pastor Dave did for Christmas Eve services. If music is as much a part of your holidays as it is for us for Christmas, please join us. We have um, some new things happening at the four o'clock service. We have six kiddos that are playing the hand chimes and that hasn't been done in a long time here. Um, They're going to perform for you. We have a glockenspiel with that. We have a cellist. We have all kinds of new things happening for that wonderful service. And then the praise band is at 6, and at 8 o'clock, the choir has three amazing anthems. We have saxophone, and we have flute, and we have drums, and it's just going to be wonderful. And we would love to have your support and to share in that wonderful evening together. Um, And then Bonnie is going to play at the 11 o'clock service. It's wonderful candlelight service that just brings everyone down and we realize that in a few minutes we're celebrating the birth of the Christ child. Um, So most of us will be here all night. 
um, on Christmas Eve, but that's okay. And uh, you can pick and choose or come and visit and bring some friends with you. It will be a wonderful service. Today is a special anthem we've got for you because a few weeks ago, maybe even months ago, uh, Matthew said to me, do you have all your music for, for Advent? I said, uh, I'm pretty good at that, but what do you have in mind? And uh, he said, I wrote one, and I had it performed years ago, but take a look at it and see, no pressure, see what happens. And I did, and went, wow, let's put that on Advent number four, because we need time to work on it. Um, and it is glorious, it is wonderful. And what he did was take the words from Charles Wesley. Do you know that name? Do you know Bible scholars? He was considered to be the English leader of the Methodist movement. Now, I did a little more digging because Matthew didn't want to speak today, um, but that happens with composers, and um, <laughs> they, get, they get humble, most of them. Um, but when we researched a little bit more about him, yes, he was a poet and a, a scholar and a cleric and all of those things, but he wrote over 6,500 hymns. And then they, did, they were looking a little bit further and saw that he could have written over 10,000. 10,000. How many have you written? <laughs> I, that just amazes me. But this was back in the 1700s. And in fact, today, today is Charles Wesley's birthday. He is over 300 years old. So talk about, <laughs> yes. Um, but this is a, a wonderful way to wrap up our Advent season, and Matthew wrote the music, and it is a beautiful, beautiful rendition of Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. Matthew, you wrote that. You composed it. I can't even, I have a music major and I can't even imagine all the things you had to put together with that. The, the different, four different parts, soprano, alto, tenor, bass. What, what do you do with the silences? What do you do with the rest? What do you do with the length of it? All, all the things that went into that, you composed that. In many ways, you and I and the lives that we live 
many ways we're asked to compose our lives. Put all these different pieces together, all these demands on us, all these desires within us, all these things, are, and we got to compose how we live our lives. And a, a big part, we had to figure out, you know, when I mean, you had to figure out what to do with the tenors, like, what the heck do I do with tenors? No offense, okay, in the back row there. Sometimes we're like, what the heck do I do with money? I know I want it and I need it and I want to grasp it and I want to hold on to every last dime. But part of us composing our lives is to, is to say, you know what I'm going to do? Kind of as an act of reformation, kind of as an act of, uh, of doing something revolutionary. It's like, I'm going to give a little bit away. <laughs> That's what we're asked to do today. Just give a little bit away. And, say, and, we're, and by doing that, we're composing our lives. And we're saying, this doesn't own me. I'm going to give a small little portion of what God so richly blessed me, me, me with. And I'm going to give it back to God through the church so that we can see where we can be a blessing. I invite our ushers to come forward now. There's so many ways to give, as you know, text to give, the giving online, go to the website. Feel free to pull your phones out right now. Uh, we don't know whether you're checking Facebook or whether you're actually uh, making a, a donation. This, this would be the good time to do that. But let's compose our lives and decide for ourselves right now at this moment. You know that money thing? Uh, I'm going to give a little bit away. It's going to feel good.
Wow, Linda, thank you. I love music. I can't sing, I can't play anything. But music is one of those things that I travel from here to here in worship. So thank you. I'm grateful for Grace Presbyterian having a wonderful choir and an organ and all these beautiful moving pieces that help me to be reminded of the divine and to experience something beyond myself. I hope today in this service you experience something. Maybe you can't name what it was yet. Maybe it lingers with you this week into the Christmas season. Hold on to that. And remember that grace created this, that there are a million moving pieces. And if you want to be a part of something bigger, it was in this moment of giving. So thank you for your generous donations that allowed you to move from your rational budgeting mind into that grateful spirit for all that we have. Thank you. Would you stand with me as we sing the doxology? You may be seated. Would you join with me in the spirit of prayer this morning? Gracious, loving God of the universe, thank you for this sacred hour together. Thank you for your presence among us, reminding us of the hope and the joy that you brought into this world with a leap of the womb and a joyous little baby. Thank you for the mission of that young man in the world, showing us how to love deeper, how to love louder, how to leap for joy, how to move from our minds to our hearts in giving and sharing. God, we thank you so much for all this you have given us. And we recognize that outside the walls of this church, there are people who are hungry, who are cold, who are hurting, who are longing, who need this joy, this comfort, a helping hand, your presence. And we also recognize that those same hungry, cold, hurting, longing people are in the seats of this very sanctuary. Remind us to lean on one another, to share in the hope, the faith, the joy and the love of Advent season all year long. Thank you that we get to be a part of your mission in this world. We say this prayer, this blessing of grace in me, grace in you, and grace in all of us. And truthfully, the source of it all is saying, God in me, God in you, and God in all of us. We bind up our prayers for the world, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. O oh, little town of Bethlehem,
while you're remaining standing. Uh, Justin, I hope you don't mind. You're supposed to stand up and give a benediction right now, a charge and blessing. But I wanted to tell a story responding to your sermon. Because every time you talked about uh, Elizabeth and the baby within her jumping, uh, when Mary and they were greeting, I couldn't help but think of an experience I had with my son, William. William, can you come help me for a minute? Real quick, come on, come on, you can do it. You're, you're a more introverted personality than your dad, much more, much more introverted, so I won't ask you to say anything, but, but I, ne I need your help here. When you were hearing about Elizabeth jumping with joy, what did you think about yeah, I know. And, and you have a special, I was honored to be asked to go to my son's own 21st birthday celebration in Las Vegas. And they're on a dance floor at a club together with some friends and everything. William invented a, 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 a dance move. What, what's it called again? The jump and wiggle. Yeah, that's right. The, the idea, can you demonstrate that for us? Oh, there we go. Okay. So you, you jump, and while you're in the midair, you wiggle. My ankles don't work so well. But anyway, I was thinking, like, if we could leave this place with a jump and wiggle, that would be good. So what, just show us the jump and wiggle, and then he'll pronounce our benediction. All right. <laughs> We, uh, we'll pay for your therapy, Bill. <laughs> Friends, you and I get to go out into the world and share the miracles that God has done inside of us. We get to go and greet people with shalom. We get to go and look people in the eyes and go, there, there is God. We get to go to all of the places that seem so distant and so harsh, and so marginalized, and look and say, I see God in you. It will take courage. It will take bravery. But friends, I promise you that the Holy Spirit of God goes out into the world in front of you, that the wind of God is at your back, that the breath of God is all around on your left and on your right above you and below you, inside of you, and all around you, today and forevermore. Thanks for being here, everyone.